Good morning. Welcome to our virtual open event for the Home Lacey campus. Our first session today, we're going to be talking all about animal care and the various courses available in this subject area. Uh, we've got a little video first just to introduce the courses to you. And then the course tutor, Kate Salard, is on hand to answer any questions you may have. Hello. May I extend a warm welcome to Herefordshire and Ludlow College? My name is Alison Moon and I am the assistant principal responsible for the Home Lacey campus. Welcome to the Faculty of Lambert Studies. This morning you will be greeted by the head of campus and the various Lambert course leaders. The courses we offer cover blacksmithing, farrowry, welding, general land based, animal care, equine, agriculture and forestry. We offer you the opportunity to study any one of these full-time courses along with a tutorial program to support your needs and the opportunity to reset GCSE Maths and English. Before we move on, I just want to tell you some of the reasons you may wish to study with us. We have an Ofsted pass rate of 93%. We have excellent physical resources. We offer a friendly, safe and open environment. We have lecturers with real world experience. And in addition to that, we have students who have said that 93% are making good progress. 94% say they enjoy their lessons. 97% say teachers encourage them to work hard and behave well. 95% say they receive good support from their teachers. 97% say they know how they are expected to behave. And 92% say they would recommend the college to a friend. So collect your questions and sit back as we welcome you to see what we have on offer in our dynamic faculty. We have some fabulous facilities for you if you wish to study animal management at Home Lacey campus. Uh, we have some very dedicated, skilled and professional staff to help you through your studies uh, which will be offered at uh, level 1, level 2 and level 3. Uh, these are offered through City and Guilds in their technical routes and we have some great uh, history of some uh, excellent results for students who studied those programmes. Most of the delivery is based around our animal care unit. Um, this is a, a, a managed unit uh, with uh, facilities such as dog grooming, uh, a tropical house, uh, a rodent house, has an aviary, lots of other facilities for you to learn those skills around animal uh, husbandry, looking after their uh, health and welfare needs uh, and also looking at making sure they have a, a very uh, well uh, maintained environment for them to live in. As I say, level two, level three programs. Uh, uh, level two is a one year program uh, where you will um, study those breeding, nutrition, handling, environment, uh, health and welfare, uh, disease uh, skills uh, and knowledge, um, all, all culminating in a technical exam and synoptic assessments uh, towards the end of the program. Uh, this is the same for level three, obviously based over a two year program. Some of the careers you can see yourself in are working in uh, animal rescue centres, working in pet shops, working in uh, those wildlife uh, and uh, um, sectors. Also courses in dog grooming are available on a part-time basis um, and many students uh, work with domestic pets and animals as careers after their time at uh, Home Lacey. We look forward to discussing these further with you. Thank you. Okay, so hopefully that's given you a little bit of an insight into uh, animal care. Uh, we've had a few questions come through uh, already. Um, so if I just bring uh, Kate on screen uh, just to answer some of these for you. Um, one of the first questions we've had, Kate, uh, is how do I know what level course to apply for? Hello, good morning, everybody. Okay, so um, whichever course you apply for, um, we've still got the ability to move you between the levels. So if you have a look at the entry requirements, for example, for the level two animal care course, 
you would require to have your GCSE grades for English and Maths at grade three and above. And then for the level three qualification, you'd need to have English, Maths and Science at grade four and above. So um, obviously we're going off predicted grades at the moment. And then when we have those confirmations of what your grades are when they come through, we can then move you to the most appropriate course for your grades. Um, but we'll obviously talk to you and have a chat with you and just make sure that you understand um, why, why that's happening. And just so, to let you know that if you don't quite get the grade that you want, that there is still a course here available for you. Um, and if you do better than you think yeah, that you thought you were going to, then um, we can obviously move you up to the next level if that's suitable. Okay, brilliant. Thank you. Um, the next question we've had come through is what sort of placement is suitable for work experience? Okay, so um, all of our students need to complete work experience. So for our level two course, they need to complete 150 hours and that's a requirement of the qualification in that year. The level three course, um, which runs over two years, you also need to complete 150 hours of work experience in the first year. So um, to suitable work experience placements can be anything regarding animals. So uh, we have students that are working in doggy daycare centres, kennels, categories, um, rescue centres, um, pet shops, farm parks. Uh, we've also got students that are working with horses as well and even working on a farm is suitable. So anything related to animals is absolutely fine for your work experience placement. Um, there are some health and safety considerations, so um, all placements will need to be checked to see that they are suitable. And um, things like them having employer's liability insurance is um, vital as well. But if you know somewhere that you could go for work experience, you just need to let us know and we can take care of all those checks for you. OK, great. Thank you. Um, so someone's asked about sort of the structure um, in terms of what days they need to attend, what time are they in college from and to? OK, fine. Um, all of our students actually attend college for four days a week. So three of those days will be made up of all of your lessons. So everything from um, animal health, um, biology, behaviour, training, exotics, um, all those different subjects. Um, if you do get um, to retake your English and Maths, that will also figure in part of those in that timetable as well. Um, so those will be your three days with all of your lessons. And part of those lessons may involve working with the animals as well. Um, on the fourth day at college, you will actually come in and you will work a full day on our amazing animal care unit. So you'll be put into small groups and you'll go around all the different areas that we have there. You'll know everything inside out and you'll actually work as it is a job with a very small group of students. So everything from cleaning out and feeding, checking, medical treatments, um, exercising, enrichment, but also sweeping, cleaning, clipping the hedges, everything. So it's like a realistic um, employment sort of working environment. So that would be your four days at college. And then, as I said before, all our students need to do work experience. So the majority of these will actually be doing the work experience one day a week. So usually four days at college and then one day a week. As for the times, um, at Home Lacey, we start a little bit later than the Hereford campus because of connecting transport coming out to the college. So the first um, lessons of the day start at half past nine and we finish just after four o'clock. And if you're travelling from Hereford um, and you have the bus pass, then you can collect the bus from Hereford bus station. And we have a designated bus put on by the council and that brings you straight out to Home Lacey in plenty of time for your lessons and collects you at the end of the day. Excellent. And um, speaking of the bus pass, um, someone's just asked, how, how do I get a bus pass and what is the bus travel like? Is it often late? Might be a good one to answer following that. <laughs> so um, the bus pass uh, is actually um, attainable from your local council. So if you are based in Hereford, 
then you would go on to um, the Hereford Council website and look at um, post 16 travel and you can apply for your bus pass on there. Likewise, if you're in Shropshire, for example, then you do the same thing, go on to your local um, uh, local um, county council um, website and look at the transport there and say that you're wanting to come to Home Lacey. Um, so we have some students that have connecting transport that come into Hereford um, and that could be on the train, it could be different buses and everybody collates then at um, in Hereford. Um, if the connecting transport is late, for example, then there are um, an, an the next bus that can bring you in so you can get into college as soon as you can. Um, but just to keep us posted if you're running late. OK, great. Um, someone's asked, do you need to do work experience over the holidays? So for work experience, we do ask that you treat this as a job. So. Um, once you've secured a placement, um, if you're going out and getting a job in animal care, they do not close for the holidays. Animals need to be looked after in half terms, Christmas, all those different times of year. Um, so we do suggest that actually all our students treat it as a job and they would be um, going to work experience during the holidays as well. Um, unless they arrange with their employer that they do not go during that time. I mean, it is voluntary work usually. If you get paid, it's a bonus, but most of it is voluntary. Um, and some of our students actually like to add a bit of variety. So they might have their placement that's one day a week, say in a doggy day care centre. Um, and then they think, well, they might actually like to try out um, perhaps a veterinary nursing environment and they might secure a work placement for half term to go for a block week in a veterinary practice, which is absolutely fine. If you're in a placement doing it one day a week, and you find that, OK, I tried this, it's not really for me, then you hand your notice in like you would do if it was an actual job. Um, you secure another placement, hand your notice in, work your notice and hopefully still get a fantastic reference from them and move on to your next placement. I mean, one of the good things about work experience, it gives you the opportunity to try out working in these environments to help you decide in which sort of niche of animal care that you want to go on and perhaps further study or work in the future. Makes perfect sense, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, so a uh, little question here, um, someone's just asked how big are the class group sizes? It, it, it does vary a little bit year on year, um, but I'll go from, from this year. So um, we've been everything from sort of 17 to just over 20. Um, that would for, for classroom sizes and then if we're doing any practical work and when you're working on the animal care unit we would actually put you into smaller groups so you're still getting that really good hands-on experience. It's not a course you would necessarily sit at the back of the class and not get involved, we're very interactive um, so it's not as if you, you don't get involved with sort of 17 to 20 people in the group, you, you, you do. Um, but we do make sure sort of um, with the practical size, smaller classes, smaller group sizes to make sure you do get that really valuable hands on experience. OK, great. Um, we've had another question sort of asking about the structure. So, so then how many lessons are there a day and, and how much time do we spend with the animals? I mean, what, what's sort of the, the split between hands on practical and, and, and other classroom time? OK. Um, it does vary on the level of course. So as um, we said in the introduction, we go from level one up to level three. And um, as with any sort of academic course, the higher the, the level you go, the perhaps the less class, uh, less practical that you do. Um, so I would predict that, for example, for a level one course, um, it may be 50-50, so practical and classroom work. And as you progress up then onto level three, because you've got so much of the theory and knowledge to cover, um, there's much more classroom work. But that is also one of the benefits of having that whole one day a week dedicated to working on the animal care unit. So even if you've got, for example, um, uh, a, a day where you've got uh, most of your lessons are in the classroom but then you do pop maybe to do a behaviour study on the animal unit and you come back to the classroom afterwards and you feedback and share etc 
Um, even if that's been quite a classroom day, um, you always know that perhaps the next day is actually your um, day on the animal care unit. So you'll be doing that up a full day. And then on top of that, you've got your work experience placement as well, which will be practical. So you've got a lot of opportunities to really expand on those, those practical skills and experience within the working environment. I hope that helps that question. Um, with the number of lessons in the day, we say we follow the same sort of um, timings as a lot of the groups at the college. So we start up day at half past nine and you'll have overall sort of um, three different subject lessons in the morning. Um, so about an hour long and you do have a break in the morning as well. Then you have lunch and there's another two lessons in the afternoon with a break in between. Great stuff. Thank you. Um, someone's asked about PPE equipment and they said, uh, will they need to buy it? And if so, how much would it cost roughly? OK, so when you're working on the animal care unit, um, it's very glamorous, obviously. So you're having to wear a gorgeous uh, work coat and tabard. And that's basically to protect the animals and to protect you as well. And uh, what we will do is in the summer, for all of our students that have been accepted onto the course, we'll send you the details of where you can buy these from. Um, and they come pre-printed with the logo and everything on, so they're all super smart. Um, I would suggest that for those, you would be paying probably about £30 for everything. Um, and you've got the options of uh, purchasing additional things like um, hoodies and um, polar shirts and things as well, which is always quite nice when we go out and visit to, to show that you're an animal care student. Um, and then working on the unit you will need to have, which most people have anyways, boots or wellies, something suitable for footwear for working on there. So no, no flip flops and pumps, etc., which is obvious. Um, and then when you're on the unit, we do have quite strict rules with regards to uh, making sure your hair's tied up, making sure you're not wearing any jewellery and all of that, which is standard procedures for working in the industry. So that's why we make sure that our animal care unit is um, reflecting that and also keeps our animals safe. Lovely stuff, thank you. Um, got a question here asking about uh, whether animal care would be a suitable study area if they've got an interest in agricultural nutrition or genetics. Oh, very good. So, um, yes, we do actually cover breeding and genetics and there will be um, in the second year of the level three program. There is also a whole unit which is dedicated to farm livestock. Um, it is very sciencey, I will say, for the level three course. So if you have a look at the subjects that are available for that, um, you've got um, lots to do with biological systems, anatomy, physiology, and you've got your um, breeding, et cetera, technologies that will be in there as well. Um, but if your interest is purely agriculture, look at the agriculture courses um, because um, they, they'll be covering everything in those courses as well. So you need to think about what your future is going to be. And if you want to have a chat to um, myself and if you want to have a chat with the agricultural tutor as well, that is the best thing to do to help decide which sort of course that you're going to start on with. Um, and I'm not offended if you suddenly go to agriculture um, for September, as long as you're on the right course that you really want to do to make sure that you thoroughly get the most out of it and enjoy your time at the college. So I would suggest if you're unsure about animal care or agriculture is talk to the tutors of both subjects and um, we would be more than happy to do that and help you make your decision. OK, that's great. Thank you. Um, yeah, if anyone watching is in that situation and um, the agriculture talk is next, so that would be starting at 11 o'clock for anyone that wants to tune into that one. Um, uh, moving on to the next question then. Uh, so we've got a question asking, uh, obviously you mentioned trips, but what trips do you tend to take students on? Oh, that seems like definitely one of the highlights of the course. We go on some fantastic trips. Um, and it gives you the opportunity to sometimes go behind the scenes and, and find out how some of these businesses work. Um, so there'll be things like um, we go to Oxford Natural History Museum. Um, we go and talk to them and do a bit on evolution, Charles Darwin, etc. Uh, we go to different zoos and wildlife parks. Um, we go to small businesses, so rescue centres. Um, and have a look at what they're doing there. And it all ties into different modules that we're teaching you. 
Um, there's an organisation called Amazing Animals, which we go to, and they are fantastic. And they actually do all of the training for animals that appear in media. So it could be um, in um, an advert in a magazine, it could be animals used in films, in adverts, on the television, all these different things. And they train the animals and they show you how they do that with different training techniques. And we go out to have a look around and they do, do some several demonstrations. And then they show you how to, um, how they would have perhaps um, a lion in, in their enclosure there and how they move the lion around and then superimpose that into a film, which is really exciting. Um, another highlight would be our visit to Wolf Watch, which is a private wolf sanctuary. It's not open to the public. Um, and the gentleman who um, runs this is absolutely fantastic. He's very pro education and he takes us for a tour around and you get to see wolves that he's rescued from. Um, it could be a, a dominance battle in a zoo. They don't have anywhere for this, this wolf to go. So they may contact him and see if he's got availability, but he's got enclosures that are acres and acres big. So not like you'd see in a zoo. Um, and that's just a fantastic experience to, to see wolves um, in a much more natural environment. And that's a fantastic highlight. So um, we also go to Cross, which is the biggest um, dog show in the world. Um, and that's in, in March. And we just managed to get there this year before, before the lockdown. Um, so I would say the trips are a fantastic um, addition to the course. And you do get an awful lot from them and a really good opportunity to speak to people about um, what they do, how they got there, and um, how, how they could perhaps give you advice and guidance on your career with animals. They sound great. I think marketing will need to uh, come along to more of these trips for, <laughs> for photos. We have lots of offers, actually. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I can imagine. <laughs> OK, um, so we've got a couple of questions, which I imagine is probably the most important question, really. Um, people want to know what sort of animals will I get to work with and how many different species do you have? Um, too many to list straight off, but I'll give you a bit of a summary of our animal care unit. So we are not a massive college compared to some of the other colleges. Um, but what we do ensure is that what, the animals that we do have, that we look after really, really well. So animal welfare is hugely important to us. So we have a tropical house. In our tropical house, we have different reptiles and amphibians and birds that are in there. Um, so that would be everything from um, the standard sort of animals that are usually kept as pets. So we've got tortoises, we've got snakes, we've got different um, lizards, chameleon, um, we've got um, different birds. So lots of different things that are in there. We do have also um, invertebrates as well. So we've got, uh, we do have a tarantula, a millipede, different things like that in there too. Um, outside, we've got um, ferrets, we've got um, chickens, nowhere near each other. Uh, we've got rabbits, we've got guinea pigs, um, we've got ducks, lots of different things outside. Uh, we've also got an outside aviary as well. And then we've also got um, a rodent room in there. We've got all the standard sort of small mammals that you keep as pets. So everything from um, mice, rats, hamsters, Degus, dormice, and more that I'm probably not remembering them all. So lots of different animals, but we don't ram lots of animals into a small space. We make sure that we look after them really well. For example, we've got um, one of our uh, snakes are in six by six bibs. People sometimes keep snakes in very small enclosures and thinking that's what they like when actually no, they actually live in the outside world outside. Their environment um, is large outside. So as long as you cater for that animal in the enclosure sufficiently, then there's no reason you shouldn't be giving them more space. So definitely something to look forward to. Quite the collection. Thank you. Oh, I don't forget we've got the dogs and the cats as well. That's also really important. We've got some resident cats um, and we also got um, the kennels, but we have day kennels. So the staff bring their dogs in. So you still get hands on experience using the dogs. And we also have a pen um, through Cats Protection. Um, so if they get um, a cat in that's um, just had her kittens and they're too young for rehoming, they might actually bring them over to the college and we'll have them there and we can help with socialising them 
and everything before they're ready for rehoming. So that's another lovely highlight that we have. That's lovely. Thank you. Um, so another question we've had come through. Um, someone's asked how the course is assessed. Is it coursework or exams? Mm, yeah, really good, good point. Um, we assess the course in a number of ways. Um, so the best way to summarise it is throughout the year you will have assignments. So that could be um, written work, it could be a written report, it could be a, producing a poster um, and it could be a practical. Um, so it could be carrying a health check out on um, a leopard gecko, for example. Um, so lots of different ways through assignments throughout the year. Um, we also have exam um, at the level two course. This is a multiple choice exam and these are on your main topics. At level three, you have a written exam again on your main topics. Uh, you take the first take of these were in March and then you get to retake them in June. Um, so you get two opportunities and the great thing is, is that they actually take your highest mark that either of those exam takes is what they take forward towards your grade. And then there's also what we call the synoptic assignment, which we describe as a project. Um, that is something that runs from January to Easter and involves, again, your main topics. And um, it will be involving um, written work and um, practical work that's all sort of joined together. And again, that comes out with a mark as well. And it's the exam and the um, synoptic assignment it's those marks that actually contribute towards your final grade at the end of the year um, and then you've got your other assignments throughout the year that will also appear on your certificate as well so you've got assignments exam and you've also got um, a project at level three um, there is also a bio biological systems exam as well um, which happens later on in the year and on all of the courses there is a short health and safety multiple choice um, test as well. Um, so it's a nice mixture and depending on whether you prefer assignments or whether you prefer exams, it's a nice mixture in there that it all goes together well, but we do teach you to prepare you really well for each of those tasks that you need to do. OK, great, thank you. Uh, we've had a few questions come through all sort of centred around um, so the, the progression side of it afterwards. Um, so someone's asked if I wanted to work with exotic animals in the future, would this be a good course to start on? And then someone said um, if you wanted to go into sort of studying zoology sort of later on, is this a good starting point as well? Yeah, I'd say working um, with exotics is a huge growing part of the industry and hence why we have a fully equipped tropical house at the college as well. Um, at both of your um, units at level two and level three, there are exotic modules in there and you will be working with those animals um, as well when you're on the animal unit. So you'll know them all really well. Um, for progressing on to a career, a career working with exotics, um, yes, it depends on what career you want. There are growing um, courses in higher education now. And as well, you've got the zoology that you mentioned there as well, which is an area that some of our students go on to. So, yes, this is a, a suitable course for progressing on to working with exotics and zoology. Um, and what you will get to do is actually meet some people that are doing this already. Um, there's um, a gentleman that comes in who runs his own um, exotics um, uh, reptile shop and he comes in and tells you about what he does and he's fantastic and there's also um, you get the opportunity to have a look at university courses which will be doing zoology plus other things the nice thing about the courses are obviously our level three course is the one that can progress onto university as it is the equivalent of your three a levels um, with those with our courses it gets you to try out all the different niches you can do with animals so it could be um, veterinary nursing it could be behavior and training it could be rehabilitation it could be wildlife and conservation um, all these different things you get to try all these different things out to work out what your niche is to enable you then to take on the next step um, and that's the nice thing about our job roles as your tutors is that we get to support you and help you make that next step as well, whether that's an application to university or whether that is actually looking to secure maybe an apprenticeship 
or um, a job within that sort of working environment that you want to do. Great stuff, thank you. Um, so we've got just one last question, unless any, anyone's got any others, uh, please feel free to type them. Um, someone's just asked um, what careers have your previous students gone on to do? Okay, so um, I would say when students actually join the college, one of the most um, in, most common ones that we come across is wanting to be a zookeeper, RSPCA inspector and a veterinary nurse. Um, and many of those students um, do change their ideas actually once they're at college, they've tried out all these different things. So I would say that um, we have um, a huge intake for students that really want to go on to do veterinary nursing. And this course really does set students up well for that. Um, you're actually taught by um, two qualified veterinary nurses, all three actually, I'm not kidding Zoe, um, during your time when you're there. Um, and you do do veterinary nursing and animal health and biology and everything that sets you up fantastically for that. And students can go on and secure a veterinary nurse placement and study in a work-based environment following the courses, or you can go and study vet nursing at university. So um, vet nursing is one that stays pretty hugely popular throughout the time. Um, a lot of the students will actually go on and do um, the university courses, and that could be anything from um, the veterinary nursing to um, university for behaviour, for biology, for conservation and welfare tend to be very popular. Um, dog grooming is an increasing interest as well. So we've got students that have gone on to do dog grooming and some which have actually started up their own businesses, which is fantastic. Um, and then others will go on to general work. Um, sometimes it could be their work placement that they've been volunteering with um, will actually take them on for either an apprenticeship or for a job at the end because they've been fantastic. Um, and again, that could be in um, pet shops, in um, we've got wildlife parks and um, uh, sort of kennels and catteries. And um, so it's a big mixture of what people actually go on to do in the future. OK, great. Thank you, Kate. Um, I think that's all of the questions we've had through. Um, I can't imagine there is, but is, if there's anything else you wanted to add on <laughs> to that, I think you've probably covered everything there. But um, I think what I'll do, um, if anybody wants to ask any other questions, um, I can pop up my email address and um, feel free to uh, contact us and I can make sure that um, we get back to you and have a chat about it. Um, but I hope everyone's found it um, spot on. <laughs> OK, thanks, Kate. So this will be available to, to watch again as a recording and um, we'll get this up as, as soon as possible. Um, if you're watching that recording and you've got any further questions uh, in the description on YouTube, we'll uh, put Kate's email address uh, so you can direct you any questions there or contact us through social media if need be. Um, hopefully that's given you some insight into the animal care courses. Um, feel free to attend our other sessions later on today. We're exploring the whole campus today. Uh, so please tune in if you wish and thank you for watching.